need someone to be the guardian of the future. We need to understand the threat that potentially exists for the United States with regard to material development and the science and technology that is being developed worldwide. We need to understand how you can take that technology and apply it in ways that will bring new and disruptive capabilities, transformative capabilities to the Army long term. I don't know what, what the future will bring, but I do know that this organization, because of the work of all of you, is held in high regard at the senior leadership levels in the Army. ARL is the Army's corporate research laboratory. It really means a lot to uh, the nation and, the, and really to, to everyone. You know, I don't want to get all corny on you guys, but it really is incredibly valuable to the Army that, that we have this resource. If you have an organization that's only focused on modernization in the near term, you will lose sight of what you will look, look like in the future. That's why you need a research laboratory. There are certain things I value most. Probably my number one, the number one thing I value the most is integrity, right? And you've heard me say this many times. Integrity equals credibility in my mind. So if you're gonna make a claim that you have 10 areas that are essential, then boy, oh boy, you better deliver on those 10 areas. I have uh, an affinity for arrow. And I will always look out for ARL, but I will not look out for status quo. So you will feel pressure from me if I see you going backwards. Don't go backwards. You can't afford to. You have, you guys have, they got it in you. You have the option to take this to the next level, to continue to do that. And I hope that it incentivizes you to keep being as bright and being as creative and innovative and inventive as you possibly can. The other thing, though, that uh, I think will set this laboratory apart now is what we've done in the Futures Division. Scientists and engineers are talking to soldiers who are writing the Army concepts. And we're talking to them about what the future could be could be from a, a material perspective, right? And getting them to understand what that alternative future might look like, if you will, if a particular technology were adopted and put into a warfighting concept. I'm not very sentimental, I have to say. Uh, it's been an honor and a privilege. This was the right decision for me to come here. I'm not ready to leave. Uh, but to be perfectly honest with all of you, that, that time was getting close. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm 58. I enlisted in the Navy when I was 18. So, you know, I have like, with my sick time leave, I have like 41 years of federal service. So, so I, was, I was getting really close. It's good for leadership to come to you and say, we feel like you're the only person who can do this job at this moment and at this time. So the question for you all will be, what are you gonna make stick? And this is for the leadership and for all of you. What are you gonna make stick? So again, I feel honored and privileged to have been the director. I hope some of what we've done will stick. When I get up to the Pentagon, I will tell you I will be a staunch defender for this laboratory, but that comes with a warning. I will not defend status quo. I will not. Because I don't believe it's in the best interest of this laboratory to do so. So keep going forward, keep pushing, keep, keep working hard, keep, keep your perspectives in, in order. And um, thanks for everything. I really appreciate it.